Municipalisation is the way that certain services were taken under the control of municipal local authorities, councils basically. And municipalisation in relationship to housing in the London context was the way that certain Labour councils, particularly in the post-war period, um, they were building quite considerably amounts of uh, public housing, but nevertheless, still it was the case that um, you know, there wasn't enough public housing available. So what they did, um, and I'm thinking of authorities like Camden, Islington and Southwark in particular, but there were various other inner London boroughs as well, they would actually compulsorily purchase buildings which were owned by private landlords. So what they would do then, buy those up and convert them then from private renting into council renting. So that's the process of, of municipalisation. There were whole sets of reasons why they did this. But one of the reasons was because back in the 1960s, they could already see these processes of gentrification occurring. So if the council municipalises those private uh, homes, it means it takes them out of the market and it prevents gentrification occurring. And you can very, very clearly see this in Camden, in the borough of Camden, where we are now. Camden had got a very extensive municipalisation programme for the, and, and it was under labour from 1965 up until you know, the end of the 70s, basically. And they bought up thousands of these private rental homes, what's called street properties. For example, if you go to Kentish Town, you can actually physically see how it was that the effects, the after effects of those policies which were enacted 40 years ago have still got a very important effect for it today. Because if you walk down from Kentish Town Station, you're walking south and the streets on the left, so Islip Street, for example, you can see that those sorts of streets, they've got quite a lot of the old Victorian homes. The ones which are privately owned, the flats, three bed flat, three quarters of a million, something like that. But many of those actual street properties are owned by the council. So it's precisely because of the fact that you have social housing in an area, it prevents gentrification from occurring. And that's extremely important in a city like London. Because again, one of the mechanisms through which you can actually prevent gentrification occurring is if you've got quite stringent private rental controls. In other words, then, that you, mean, you have restrictions about the amounts of private rents and you also give private tenants a good deal of security. Those kind of regulations mean then that it's more difficult for gentrification to occur because the landlords, it's more difficult then for them to evict and get rid of low income residents. The problem with London is precisely that it has a very deregulated private rental system. Most people are on assured short haul tenancies of six months or 12 months, and it means then that it's relatively easy for landlords then to uh, get rid of people once the, once the contracts, once the leases has run to an end. So in other words, there's an inbuilt dynamic to the process of private, private uh, of, of gentrification in London because of private renting. So the, the only way then that London has got of actually preventing gentrification occurring, de facto, is having social renting and private rent, public renting because that takes it out of the market. Accumulation by dispossession is a term which was introduced by David Harvey, I think in 2003. And basically then it's the idea that one of the ways then through which capital accumulation takes place in cities is that as land values become higher in inner city areas, so basically then, uh, you know, uh, developers can, can make money by basically dispossessing poorer people of their, 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 their land, their homes in the inner city area. So it's a way then of making money through the dispossession and displacement then of lower income people. And in many ways, that's exactly what's going on in, in this city is that you know, the, the potentially the land on which council estates sit has got a potentially huge value. But the problem is that the people who are living in that land and living in those properties now are paying relatively low rent, council tenants. So the idea is then that you can bring about a switch in the land value. You can increase it. You can realise its potential as long as you get rid of the existing lower income tenants. It's what's what I've called, it's what's called state-led gentrification, basically. 
Um, and that's precisely what's, what's happening, really. This process of accumulation by dispossession has almost become part of the, the mainstream policy lexicon. It, it's, it's, not, it's not framed in those terms, but nevertheless, that's, that's, what's, that's the reality of what's happening. So, for example, there was a report done a couple of years ago which was headed up by Lord Adonis, the Labour peer, called City Villagers, and it had a whole series of chapters, but one of the chapters was written by Savills, and the idea then is that essentially that, uh, that we can solve London's housing crisis, we can actually then produce more homes, plus we can return the city to its original Victorian streetscape, which apparently everybody loves, provided we get rid of all of the modernist council estates, basically. So that was the argument. It's basically you, you're kind of solving a, a, a whole series of problems in one. You're solving your... Uh, your housing crisis, your demographic housing crisis, you are solving uh, your design problems because nobody likes modernist estates apparently. You can then return the city to its original Victorian uh, um, um, uh, form basically with Victorian streets. Um, of course, the problem with that is, again, it's exactly as I've just said, it's precisely the Victorian streets which are gentrified. That's the problem. You know, so in other words, if you want to have London as a city, which caters for low income people, as well as high income people, you have to have places that low income people can live. And because private renting is so astronomically expensive now, de facto, the only places then that low, low income people can, can generally live is, is social rental housing, council housing, housing association properties, basically, because they are, the rents are much, generally, much more controlled and lower, and generally much more affordable than anything in the private sector. So, if you, again, if you, if you get rid of the council estates, yes, you might increase the total amount of uh, housing, but you'll, you'll get a net reduction in the amount of social rental housing. That's exactly what the GLA reports a couple of years ago found. There was a net reduction of social rental housing on the 50 estates, council-built estates, that had been redeveloped. It's a massive increase in market rental, net reduction in social renting. Again, that does nothing for low-income people in this city. It makes their housing crisis much worse.